Hey, what's happening guys? Something different today. This was my dad's workshop in the basement, you know, the house I grew up in, the house I live in now. And I've just really gotten around to cleaning it out. These were old uh, science lab tables. My dad worked for the schools like everybody else in our family. When they tore down one of the schools here in town, called the Franklin School, he took these tables home with him. And they became his little workshop tables, and they worked out really good. And, uh, oh, there was just so much stuff that we found down here. Let's go upstairs and I'll show you one of the things I found. So here it is. It is a Precision Model T15 rain tight photoelectric control when i was a kid we had a uh i guess you call it a pole light out in the front yard and uh, i used to have to switch it on and off until one day the old man shows up with this guy or one like it i don't know if this was the original and uh i asked him what it was and he said this is what he called it an electric eye he said it'll turn on the lights when it gets dark so, if we can get a close-up look here, you can see there is a uh, an LDR in there, a light-dependent resistor, and there must be some sort of switch also. And this is a UL-listed photoelectric switch 632B or 652B, you can't quite tell. And then this clip on here, I thought it was holding the plastic on. It's not. I'm really not sure what the clip is for. But you can see right here, we have the wiring diagram. So PC, not, not computer, photo cell, our line voltage, the black wire comes in, the neutral wire comes out, and then we need to send neutral and the switch live out to our load. And for our load, is something else I found downstairs in the drawer. It was one of these beautiful old porcelain uh, light bases. When this house was built in 1934, it had the old knob and tube wiring. And these are the <laughs> kind of light fixtures you might have found. And my dad was a pack rat, and he never threw anything away. So we have lots of this. So I think we have everything we need here to put... Uh, To put this together, we can do a little demonstration. Need to connect some wires up, and I've got some uh, this extra zip cord here, and let me do a little bit of that, and we'll get going. Okay, I've got everything set up according to the uh, diagram on here. I used uh, solder stick components because I like them, and solder stick is a sponsor of this channel. So I wanted to show you some of their products, and here are the solder stick uh, butt connectors. They're super easy to use. I personally have not had any luck with a hot air gun. Perhaps mine isn't hot enough. Just a little butane torch is all it took. And we'll zoom in here. You can see there's a good connections. That solder has melted and flown and flowed in both cases. Now it looks a little funky, and that's only because the insulation on this wire is thicker than the insulation on this wire, so that's bigger than that one. So then, if we go over here and look at our uh, T15 here, you can see our neutral wire comes into here, like right there, and then it goes out to the lamp. So we need to uh, put a T on that. And what was perfect for doing that right there were the solder stick T-tap connectors, also known as insulation displacement connectors, as they pierce the insulation of the wire. You check this out. Inside of here, your wire is going to slip in there. Let me, get a, let me find a piece of wire here. One second. Okay. So here's our wire, and what you do is you just kind of seat it in that little V thing like that, 
and you're going to bring this over. Get in there. There you go. We're going to bring that over the top like so. I like these uh, Craftsman slip joint pliers to grab them with. You just get in there like that. Carefully go on there until it clicks. There we go. Now that is solidly on there and your wire has been pierced. So the other side to this equation is one of these uh, like spade type connectors here. Now you put your wire in there and then you have a mostly air, mostly watertight, but a very solid and secure, and I would call it a safe connection. There's nothing exposed there. That's pretty solid. Now, if you if you actually need it to be 100% waterproof, well, keep in mind, nothing's 100% waterproof. But you could coat it with like that liquid rubber or something like that, and that would, that would help you to seal it up a bit. All right. We've got everything connected correctly. Fingers crossed. This isn't energized yet. I'm, I'm no electro boom. So we'll plug this guy in. Now, according to the instructions, what should happen is as soon as we turn this on, the light should come on for a couple seconds to let us know that it is working, and then it should go off. We can then cover this, the, the sensor, the eye, and it should come back on, it says, in 60 to 90 seconds. Will it? I don't know. Maybe. All right, now I'm going to step away and plug this in because I don't like to be near things that blow up. But you should still be able to hear me. All right, here we go. We're going to plug it in. And hopefully not blow out everything in the house. One, two, three. The light is on. The light does not seem to be going out. Uh, it's pulling 11 watts. That may be why that one was in a drawer down there, perhaps because it didn't work anymore. Well, let's see what's inside of it. Oh, there it is. Excellent. All right, so now we're going to cover up the sensor. No watts, obviously. No amps. So that's covered up. And you will sit here and uh, we'll see what happens. While we're waiting for that to happen, let me turn you over here to the computer. I generally print this out, but since we're doing this, we can just talk about it. Oh, there's the bulb. It is back on and everything is working fine. Anyway, what we're going to talk about is this. Memorial Day is coming up in a few days. That was my cousin, Nate, killed in 2004 in Haditha, Iraq. Memorial Day is for those guys. The ones who gave everything they had. We'll never have a life. We'll never have family. We'll never have children. But they made sure that we would. God bless each and every one of them. All right, this thing is marketed as uh, rainproof, so getting into it might be a little tricky. But rest not rest rest assured, we'll get in. Since I have no intention to use this, and these are not terribly expensive items, like they're less than twenty bucks. I'm not terribly worried about this. One moment. I'm a good five minutes in and progress is slow. I thought this plastic might be all like shattery plastic, but no, it's not. It's it's very chewy. Which is you know probably due to whatever adhesive they use to 
assemble this and it seems like all I'm doing is peeling the outer edge off so I'll be back here we go oh yeah listen to that glorious cracking uh, okay somewhere there we are they've got the wiring all hot snotted in there it, it was not coming out there we go I caramba so there it is let's have a looky loo one moment so we've reached the end of the video and we can finally get to the point of the video what's inside an electric eye switch well there's your LDR your light dependent resistor one side goes off here to this side of this little uh, read type switch there the other side goes up here to our neutral connection there's our line there's our load there's the switch what I'm looking for and not seeing is a resistor in line with that uh, LDR to make a voltage doubler or a voltage divider wonder why there we go let's get a reading on that okay there it is just sitting in ambient light and it says resistor 752 ohms now I'm going to take a stupid bright light and put it on there, and we'll test it again. Testing. 105 ohms. Okay. Now we take the stupid bright light off, turn that face down on the table, and we'll test again. Well, now it thinks it's a capacitor. Let me try it one more time. So it's about a 1K to what? 100 ohm resistor in there. Neat. Neat, neat, neat. And if you'll notice here, there is a screw on this which makes it adjustable see there's our there's our switch and the gap man that gap is like not much but you can adjust it that's all I was saying all right guys that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. A big thanks to all of our patrons for watching. A big thanks to Solder Stick for sponsoring it and putting those great products out there for all of us. And a big thanks to everybody who gave their life so that you and I can drink beer and eat hot dogs on Monday. God bless all of you. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation. Waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits.
spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.